Really glad to have back the senator from the great state of Texas, Republican Ted Cruz. Ted, how are you? Bags, I'm doing terrific. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing very well. It took COVID-19 to get us to actually see you on these interviews, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> are you Are you home? Are you in Washington? Where are you? So I am at home in Houston, have been, been working here all week. Um, Heidi's at home. The girls are at home. The whole family is here. They're doing school from home. She's working from home, and and uh, and we're just being productive. I'm I'm right here in the living room. I love that that the kids are doing school. I've got a five year old and an eleven year old that are still in school. Then I've got three older daughters that are out of school, uh, and the five and the eleven year old they're doing school at home. The eleven year old twice a day. I love it. I hated the idea yeah. that we were going to shut education down so early in the school year and have no idea how we're going to make it up. And the fact is, in the digital age, like you and I are doing right now, that only made sense that we would continue education, right? I, look, that, that's right. Our, our girls are third and sixth grade, and their school has them. They're doing an online program where they get assignments and they work on homework, and, and they're able to do uh, a Google Hangout chat where yeah. they, they can talk with their teachers and talk with their classmates. And it's, it's just been a week they've been doing it, but so far it's gone quite well. you get, you got to be careful, though, because I walked through right after taking a shower, and they were doing the Zoom or something. And the, the, the camera was on, so I had to sort of run past so nobody saw, you know, I was just in my sweatpants or something. So it's you, all very You don't necessarily <laughs> want to get broadcast to the school in your boxers. That would, that, that'd be a mistake. That'd be bad, Ted. It is uh, Senator Ted Cruz. I, I talked to, to Corin the other day, and I want to get your insight on this. The, the $2 trillion was necessary. It's actually the third piece of legislation. Many people didn't know that. Um, that had to do with relief for coronavirus and the pandemic. Yep. Um, in that in that money, people are still kind of confused as to how they get it. We have a better idea now that many will get it injected right into their in their checking account or their saving, yep. whatever whatever account they have for direct deposit. Others have to apply for unemployment. Others have to apply for small business loans and the like. Ted, is this enough, or is there more in the way? Well, it depends what happens in the weeks to come. Uh, I, I think we need th – this was a major relief package. Two trillion dollars, e even for Washington, is a crap ton of money. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean that's nearly 10 percent of our national debt. And, and it says something. In, in ordinary times, this would never have passed. There would be no world in which I would support a two trillion dollar bill in ordinary times. But, but these are not ordinary times. This, this is an extraordinary crisis, and actually two twin crises we're facing. A, a public health crisis of, uh, of the coronavirus pandemic and an economic crisis that's being caused by all of the governmental measures that have been put in place to protect the public health. We've seen now over 10 million people have lost their jobs in the last two weeks. And so this $2 trillion relief package, I don't call it a stimulus bill. It's not designed for that. It's designed to provide emergency relief bridge loans to help people get through what is hopefully this temporary short-term crisis being caused by the pandemic. It's Senator Ted Cruz, great state of Texas. I know that you were talking about Saudi Arabia and maybe even Russia flooding the market with oil. Uh, it seems as though those who aren't, aren't our best friends take every opportunity they can when they think there's a sign of weakness to, to try to damage us. I want to talk about the oil industry a little bit. We're a net exporter of oil now. But there's yep. a certain uh, amount of money per barrel that we have to get, these companies have to get, to do the fracking and to get it out of shale. Um, if Russia and Saudi Arabia flood the market, that's going to drive the, the cost of a barrel so far down that it might stop industry here. Is that what your concern is? Well, it, it's certainly a major concern that you saw what Saudi Arabia did in particular is decided to flood the market, to drop the price down, and, and to take advantage of this coronavirus crisis to try to bankrupt uh, U.S. energy producers to try to drive Texas shale producers out of business and, and take away a whole lot of people's jobs. Yeah. And, and a couple of weeks ago, I joined with 12 other senators. We wrote a letter uh, to the ambassador of Saudi Arabia blasting the Saudis for doing that. I had a conference call uh, with the Saudi ambassador a week ago where I think nine of us were on the call, nine senators. And it was as candid and, and bare knuckled a conversation as I've ever had with any foreign leader. Good. Where I'll tell you what what I conveyed. I said, listen, no, but no state does more business with Saudi Arabia than the state of Texas. And you right now are waging economic warfare on Texas. And their response is, well, but Russia, but Russia. And I said, but Russia, garbage. Russia is our enemy. We know it. They behave like it, and we treat them like it. You're supposed to be our friend. And so don't screw with us. Yeah. And I'll tell you, so this morning, the president tweeted out that he had had a conversation with MBS 
uh, the ruler in Saudi Arabia, and they'd reached an agreement. And I actually spoke just about an hour ago to the Saudi ambassador who called me, uh, who said the Saudis have now agreed collectively and working with the other producers to reduce output by 10 million barrels a day, which should help stabilize the price. Good. But the problem is that's not going to fix the problem. That at least, if they carry through with that, that stops the Saudis from causing damage. But what's also devastating the energy market is that you've seen demand collapse. Global yeah. demand for energy has dropped between 25 and 30 million barrels a day. And, 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 and that is because people aren't driving their cars and they're not flying their planes. Everyone's staying at home. And, you know, you and I aren't, aren't using much energy beyond the, the electricity for our computers. Right. Exactly um, right. That challenge has got to change. And so I'm spending a great deal of my time this week on the phone with business leaders in the energy sector. I just, just hung up with the U.S. Energy Secretary focused on this issue and trying to help as many of the small independent producers, the, the small EMPs, the, the, the folks who are producing jobs throughout the Eagleford, throughout the Permian, all yeah. throughout Texas, to, to, to help them hold on. But it's a challenging time. It is, it is a big, big challenge in energy right now. It is. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz, you know, it's a double-edged sword, Ted, because we like to go to the gas pump and say, man, I'm paying a dollar fifty or I'm paying a dollar eighty, And we feel good about that. But we don't realize how many millions of jobs are in energy. It's in the tens of millions of people in this country. And the last thing we want to see is to, to see that collapse because then we're all in trouble. Um, I, wanted to, I want to go to China for well, a second. And, and oh, go, let, go ahead. Let me go make ahead. a quick point on yeah. that, Joe. That's a fair point, but... but we- We'd also like in, to see some sort of price stability in, in that if you see the global price of oil plummet to 20 bucks a barrel or 10 bucks a barrel, yeah. that'll give us cheap gasoline for a little while. But the problem is it bankrupts all the small independent producers. And then when the economy gets moving again, when we get beyond coronavirus, we could see $100 a barrel oil. But all of the little guys have been dr- driven out of business, and it's just the, the super majors that are left. And then we end up paying much, much more at the tank. That ends up hurting the consumers too. Uh, you, you know, it's nice to have a buck fifty or two dollar oil, uh, gasoline rather. Um, but but if we drive everyone out of business in six months, we could be seeing four dollar gasoline, which is not a good outcome. And by the way, that's actually the plan by people like Russia and Saudi Arabia, and I'm glad that you stepped up. The plan is get rid of the little guys. The competition is gone. They could set the price wherever they want, and what do we have to say about it? Nothing. No, I completely get it, but it is kind of it's, – it's a it's – a, a, a double-edged sword because, man, I love paying less than $2 a, a gallon, but you're right. It could be $4 right around the corner. I want to talk about China, if, if I can, because we, we just added this $2 trillion we care bill, whatever we're calling it. I know that it's not a stimulus, and it's right that we're doing it. I support that bill. But where are we getting the money? And are we really borrowing it from China? And if we are borrowing it from China, isn't that sort of circular that this whole thing started in China? Ted, can we financially ask China for some for some, some payback because of all this? There's no doubt China bears real responsibility for this global pandemic. Uh, the Chinese government hid the outbreak when it occurred in Wuhan. Yeah. They, they kept secret. They didn't bring in doctors. They didn't bring in public health experts. And they let it fester for weeks and then months. When the, the doctor who was the whistleblower, they punished him. He ultimately lost his life to COVID-19. And, and as a result of the communist government in China's efforts to cover this up, this became a global pandemic. If, if they had stepped in and, and, and acted quickly, maybe it could have been contained and kept a regional epidemic instead of going global. Um, I think there needs to be serious accountability. I think we need to, to ascertain where this virus came from, whether it escaped inadvertently from, from the nearby Wuhan Institute of Virology, which was studying coronaviruses and bats. Right. I think that's a very important question to raise. Um, I think all of those questions will come, but they will come after we have defeated this pandemic. I think the first urgency is the public health crisis and the immediate economic crisis. And the next step is going to be the accountability of what decisions the communist government of China made that, that contributed to what's happening. The left media in this country, Ted, as you know, is taking China's word for everything. China is, uh, is ahead of the world and they're solving the problem when, in fact, they started the problem. I have no confidence in the numbers coming out of China. The, the allegation that yep. we have more cases here than they had there is something we just can't substantiate. We have no clue. Do you, are, do you feel confident that we have any idea how many people had it or died in China from coronavirus? 
I'll tell you what I'm absolutely confident of, which is that their numbers are a total lie, yeah. that it's complete fabrication. We know they're lying. We know China covered it up on the front end, but China claims that at the start of March they had 80,000 cases, and at the end of March they had 81,000 cases. Now, anyone who's seen the curve of this disease, that's not remotely credible. They just right. stopped acknowledging cases, and then so many of, of the U.S. mainstream media – just just dutifully parroted the propaganda, oh, the U.S. has passed China. We have no idea how many cases and how many deaths are happening in China right. because they're just lying about it. And, 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 and the media, you know, the reason the media doesn't really want to report on that story is the network executives stand to make millions and even billions of dollars by access to the Chinese market, and they right. don't want to piss off the Chinese. Right. But but you know we need, we need actually journalists who are willing to to, to speak the truth and and ask obvious and important questions. It's same sort of thing the NBA did when when China was in question about Hong Kong. They completely turned against the the Houston Rockets guy, and, and you had LeBron yep. James talking about how oh he doesn't know anything about what's really happening in China because LeBron James knows. The fact is China is a, a a a an authoritarian government that was shutting down free speech protests in Hong Kong. And yes. the NBA was afraid to go against them because of the billions of dollars in stake, right? I mean, the NBA was terrified of crossing China. One little tweet from Daryl Morey, the general manager of the Rockets, as right. you know, I mean, die-hard Rockets. I know. Other than a, you know, other than Houstonians, nobody knew who Daryl Morey was. And then the Communist Party of China made him famous because <laughs> they true. lost their minds. Right. That 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 he tweeted, uh, "Stand for freedom and democracy. Stand for Hong Kong." Like a, an innocuous tweet, and the NBA prostrated itself. I mean, just, just begged and and, and apologized, yep. and, and it was embarrassing. You saw Nike pull products from the shelf because the Chinese were mad, and and the degree to which the American business community is terrified of crossing the Chinese government is really an enormous challenge, not just today, but for the next year and for the next decades and centuries going yeah. forward. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, Senator Ted Cruz. I know you've got another interview coming up. One, one last quick one. Um, there was some pork put in this bill, and and you guys accepted it because the greater good was at stake here. Uh, you saw something like specifically the Kennedy Center got twenty five million dollars. Ted, the next day they fired everybody. They got twenty five million dollars, pocketed it, and then laid everybody off. Nobody gets paid anymore. When something like that happens, is there going to be hell to pay for the left because they 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 were stopping? Nancy Pelosi already delayed it a week. We know that. You guys had a bill, you had it done, Chuck Schumer kowtowed to her. So when you see this money going out to ridiculous um, items having nothing to do with coronavirus, is there going to be hell to pay or they just get what they get because they have the house? Look, it, it was ridiculous and it was abusive. The, and that being said, and it, and it was the price the Democrats brought as they insisted on these carve-outs. That being said, most of the garbage Pelosi was trying to get in there, we managed to get out. Right. And and so you'll recall when we first were going to take up the bill was a week ago Sunday, and at the last minute the Democrats blocked it entirely, and it's because Pelosi parachuted in with a list of demands of all these partisan objectives she had that had nothing to do with the coronavirus. Right. Uh, she was trying to ratchet up emission standards for airplanes. Um, you know, I Crazy. stood on the Senate floor and said, what the hell do emission standards for airplanes have to do with the coronavirus? That, yeah. Let's focus on the crisis and solve the crisis. Now, thankfully, you know, they were trying to push the Green New Deal. They were trying to pu push all of their political agenda at the voting ballot. Thankfully, most of that was taken out. And, yeah. and so look at a two trillion dollar bill. There are parts that I don't like and I wish weren't there, but but the, the the majority of it, I think, is important relief. The relief for individuals who are hurting, the relief for small businesses, $377 billion to small businesses right. and emergency loans, that, that, that is available to every restaurant owner, everyone who owns a bar or a nail salon or a movie theater or a hardware store, and, and that's needed relief guaranteed loans and if they use that money to pay salaries or rent or mortgage or utilities those loans are forgiven so it's a grant it's designed it's great. to help millions of people keep their jobs so they keep getting a paycheck during this time of crisis i think that was important to do and i'm glad we did it 
it's why it was unanimous in the Senate, 96 to nothing. Uh, get to his website, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. Go follow him on, on Twitter, at Ted Cruz, at Senator Cruz. There are two different uh, accounts. We're going to remind people in November what Pelosi tried to pull, Ted, that's for sure. I appreciate your time, and stay safe, and best to Heidi and the kids, okay? Thank you, Pags. Appreciate it. All God right. bless. Back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.